Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to another lesson. In this lesson we are going to learn about IELTS speaking test parts 2 and 3. The topic of our cue card is clothes. In this lesson we are going to look at some part 2 and part 3 questions. We are also going to look at some rounding off questions at the end of part 2. By the end of this lesson, I will provide you with the sample answers for all the questions, but I will also provide you with some very useful tips to ensure that you pass your IELTS speaking test with a very high band. Now, let us begin with part two questions. Describe an occasion when you wore your best clothes. You should say A, what you wore, B, when you wore them, C, what they looked like, and D, explain why you wore them. We are talking about an occasion. So an occasion is an event. Now let us look at A, what you wore. In this question, the key word is what. So the examiner expects you to describe your outfit. Now you can answer this question by saying, I wore a short light blue lace dress with a full skirt, a cinched in waist, a bow neckline and bell shaped arms. I chose a small dark blue leather handbag to match and a pair of pink stiletto heels. To finish off the outfit, I wore a bright pink hat. I wore a short light blue lace dress with a full skirt, a cinched in waist, a bow neckline and bell-shaped arms. I chose a small dark blue leather handbag to match and a pair of pink stiletto shoes. To finish off the outfit, I wore a bright pink hat. I wore a short light blue lace dress with a full skirt, a cinched in waist, a bow neckline and bell shaped arms. I chose a small dark blue leather handbag to match and a pair of pink stiletto heels. To finish off the outfit, I wore a bright pink hat. Now that is for women or girls. Now for men or boys, you can say. I wore a striped dark blue suit, a striking bright yellow tie, a crisp white shirt and a brown belt to match with my brown leather shoes. To finish off the outfit, I wore a trendy gold watch. I wore a striped dark blue suit, a striking bright yellow tie, a crisp white shirt and a brown belt to match with my brown leather shoes. To finish off the outfit, I wore a golden watch. I wore a striped dark blue suit, a striking bright yellow tie, a crisp white shirt and a brown belt to match with my brown leather shoes. And to finish up the outfit, I wore a modern trendy golden watch. Okay, so in that answer, you have described what you wore from head to toe. Okay, let's move on to B when you wore them so the key word here is when now you can answer this question by saying i wore this outfit on my older brother's wedding last year on march the 15th it was a memorable occasion marked with a lot of good food and drinks music and dance as well as a lot of joy and laughter i wore this outfit on my older brother's wedding last year on march the 15th it was a memorable occasion marked with a lot of good food and drinks, music and dance, as well as a lot of joy and laughter. I wore this outfit on my older brother's wedding last year on March 15th. It was a memorable occasion marked with a lot of good food and drinks, music and dance, as well as a, a lot of joy and laughter. So in this question, you have not simply said when by saying it was March the 15th. No, you have provided a lot of details around when. You've pointed out that you wore the outfit on your older brother's wedding last year on March the 15th. Two, it was a memorable occasion marked with a lot of good food, drinks, music and dance, as well as a lot of joy and laughter. Let's move on to see what they looked like. What? they looked like. Now, in this question, you're supposed to describe what the outfit actually looked like. You're not supposed to describe what you wore, but what it looked like. Okay. 
Now you can answer this question by saying, I must say that I looked absolutely stunning and stylish. My outfit was quite trendy and I got a lot of compliments on how gorgeous I looked. My outfit was very unique compared to everybody else's because majority of the guests chose to wear long dresses. My bright pink hat made me stand out from the crowd. I must say that I looked absolute, absolutely stunning and stylish. My outfit was quite trendy and I got a lot of compliments on how gorgeous I looked. My outfit was very unique compared to everybody else's because majority of the guests chose to wear long dresses. My bright pink hat made me stand out from the crowd. I must say that I looked absolutely stunning and stylish. My outfit was quite trendy and I got a lot of compliments on how gorgeous I looked. My outfit was very unique compared to everybody else's because majority of the guests chose to wear long dresses. My bright pink hat made me stand out from the crowd. So in that answer, I have explained through a number of sentences what I looked like. Firstly, I pointed out that I looked absolutely stunning and stylish. Two, I pointed out that my outfit was very trendy. Three, that I got a lot of compliments on how gorgeous I looked. Four, that my outfit was very unique compared to everybody else's. And finally, that my bright pink hat made me stand out, stand out from the crowd. Now, to stand out from the crowd is when you're very visible. Your, your outfit is very striking. It stands out because it's very different and maybe very bright in colors. Now let's move on to D. Explain why you wore them. So in this question, the examiner expects you to provide a number of reasons as to why you chose that particular outfit. Now you can answer this question by saying, well, it was my brother's wedding and I wanted to wear something different compared to what I normally wear on other weddings to mark this special occasion. Furthermore, I felt compelled to wear an outfit that was going to match with the theme of the wedding and its blue and pink color scheme. Well, it was my brother's wedding and I wanted to wear something different compared to what I normally wear on other weddings to mark this special occasion. Furthermore, I felt compelled to wear an outfit that was going to match with the theme of the wedding and its blue and pink color scheme. Well, it was my brother's wedding and I wanted to wear something different compared to what I normally wear on other weddings to mark this occasion. Furthermore, I felt compelled to wear an outfit that was going to match with the theme of the wedding and its blue and pink color scheme. So in this answer, I have provided a number of reasons as to why I chose this particular outfit. The first one was um, the fact that it was my brother's wedding and I wanted to wear something different compared to what I normally wear on other weddings to mark this occasion. And secondly, because I felt compelled to wear an outfit that was going to match with the theme of the wedding and its blue and pink color scheme. Now, let's move on to the rounding off questions. Once you have given your answers for part two, the examiner at some point will stop you and then they will ask you two rounding off questions. The first question is, do clothes reflect someone's personality? So in other words, do you think there is a link between the sort of clothes that people wear and their character? Now you can answer this question by saying, to a great extent, yes. Majority of the people who are extroverts tend to wear bright colored clothes, whereas those that are introverts, such as myself, opt for darker clothes such as blue, gray, and black. To a great extent, yes. Majority of the people who are extroverts tend to wear bright colored clothes, whereas those that are introverts, such as myself, opt for darker clothes such as blue, gray, and black. To a great extent, yes. Majority of the people who are extroverts tend to wear bright colored clothes, whereas those that are introverts, such as myself, opt for darker colors, such as blue, gray, and black. Let's move on to question two. 
in question one, remember I pointed out that um, I partially I agree with the statement to a certain extent, and that is because in my opinion, people who are extroverts tend to wear bright colored clothes, but the people who are introverts, such as myself, choose to wear dark clothes such as blue, gray, and black. Okay, they choose darker colors. Let's move on to two. What do you think about secondhand clothes? In this question, the examiner wants to know your opinion about secondhand clothes. Secondhand clothes are the clothes that you buy once someone has already worn them. Okay, now you can answer this question by saying, I'm a big fan of secondhand clothes. This is because I think it is a good way of buying clothes cheaply and saving up on some money for other things. Furthermore, if you go to a vintage shop, you can also buy some pretty fashionable and unique secondhand clothes. And finally, I think that recycling clothes is also really good for the environment. I'm a big fan of secondhand clothes. Firstly, I think it is a good way to buy cheap clothes and save up some money for other things. Furthermore, if you go to a vintage shop, you can also buy some pretty fashionable and unique secondhand clothes. And finally, I think that recycling clothes is really good for the environment. I'm a big fan of secondhand clothes. Firstly, I think it is a good way to buy cheap clothes and save up money for other things. Furthermore, if you go to a vintage shop, you can also buy some pretty fashionable and unique secondhand clothes. And finally, I believe that recycling clothes is very good for the environment. So in that answer, I have made it very clear that I'm a big fan of secondhand clothes and I have provided some reasons as to why. Firstly, I pointed out that I think it is a good way of buying cheap clothes and or rather buying clothes cheaply and saving up the money for other things. Two, that you can also find some pretty fashionable and unique secondhand clothes if you go to a vintage shop. And finally, I think recycling clothes is good for the environment. Now let's move on to part three questions. Part three questions. Question A. Do people often wear traditional clothes in your country? The key words here are traditional clothes and often. Okay. Now you can answer this question by saying not really. Majority of the people tend to wear modern clothes such as dresses and skirts um, for girls or a pair of trousers and a shirt for men. Once in a while though you will spot someone on the street wearing a traditional attire such as a kaftan. Not really. Majority of the people in my country tend to wear modern clothes such as dresses, skirts and blouses for women or a pair of trousers and a shirt for men. Once in a while though you will spot someone on the street wearing a traditional attire such as a kaftan. Not really. Majority of the people in my country tend to wear modern clothes such as dresses and skirts for women or a pair of trousers and a shirt for men. Once in a while though, you will spot someone on the street wearing a traditional attire such as a kaftan. Now let's move on to B. On what occasions do people wear traditional clothes? The key words here are on what occasions. So the examiner expects you to identify some events when people wear traditional clothes. Now you can answer this question by saying, people choose to wear traditional outfits on a variety of occasions, such as during marriage ceremonies, national festivals, funerals, religious rituals, and also during folk music dance performances. People choose to wear traditional outfits on a variety of occasions, such as during marriage ceremonies, national festivals, funerals, religious rituals, and also during folk music dance performances. 
People choose to wear traditional outfits on a variety of occasions such as during marriage ceremonies, national festivals, funerals, religious rituals, and also during folk music, dance performances. Now let's move on to C. Do you think that people should wear traditional clothes and why? In this question, the examiner expects you to provide your personal opinion as to whether you think people should be wearing traditional clothes and give the reasons. Now you can answer this question by saying, in my opinion, people should wear traditional clothes for a number of reasons. Firstly, it is a good way of showing your cultural and national identity. For example, the sari is symbolic of the Indian culture. Secondly, it is an important way of preserving national values and cultural heritage. Furthermore, some of these outfits not only look stunning, but they are also very comfortable. And over the last one year or so, we have seen a lot of traditional outfits on catwalks and runways all over the world. In my opinion, People should wear traditional clothes for a number of reasons. Firstly, it is a good way of showing your cultural and national identity. For example, the sari is symbolic of the Indian culture. It is also an important way of preserving national values and the cultural heritage of a country. Furthermore, some of these outfits not only look stunning, but they are also very comfortable. And over the last one year or so, we have seen a lot of traditional outfits on catwalks and runways all over the world. In my opinion, people should wear traditional clothes for a number of reasons. Firstly, it is a good way of showing your cultural and national identity. For example, the sari is symbolic of the Indian culture. It is also an important way of preserving national values and cultural heritage. Furthermore, some of these outfits not only look stunning, but they are also very comfortable to wear. And over the last one year or so, we have seen a lot of traditional outfits on catwalks and runways all over the world which means that traditional clothes have become trendy. Now let's move on to D. What are the differences between casual clothes and formal clothes? What are the differences between casual clothes and formal clothes? So remember the examiner wants to know differences. So it is plural, that is between casual and formal clothes. Now you can answer this question by saying casual clothes are the type of clothes that we wear in formal settings such as jogging pants or a pair of jeans and a short which we wear on weekends or whilst we are indoors at home. On the other hand, formal clothes are mainly worn in business or formal settings, for example at work. They include a suit and a tie for men and a skirt suit for women. Casual clothes are the type of clothes that we wear in informal settings such as jogging pants or a pair of jeans and a t-shirt which we wear on weekends or whilst we are indoors at home. On the other hand, formal clothes are mainly worn in business or formal situations such as at work. They include a suit and a tie for men and a skirt suit for women. Now, let's move on to E. What kind of clothes should people wear at work? What kind of clothes should people wear at work? In this question, you are expected to explain in your opinion what kind of clothes people should be wearing at work now you can answer this question by saying 
That depends on what type of work someone does. For some formal professions such as banking and law, the dress code should be formal, meaning a suit and a tie for men and a formal dress or a skirt and a blouse for women. On the other hand, if the work environment is less formal, then they can wear casual clothes such as a pair of jeans and a t-shirt. Some jobs though require that people wear a uniform such as nurses, doctors and the police. That depends on what type of work someone does. For some formal professions such as banking and law, the dress code should be formal, meaning a suit and a tie for men and a formal dress or a skirt suit for women. On the other hand, if the work one does is less formal, then they can wear casual clothes such as a pair of jeans and a t-shirt. Some jobs though require that their employees wear a uniform such as nurses, doctors and the police. That depends on what type of work someone does. For some formal professions such as banking and the law, the dress code should be formal meaning a skirt suit and a tie for men and a formal dress for women. On the other hand, if the work one does is less formal, then they can wear casual clothes such as a pair of jeans and a t-shirt. In some jobs though, one is required to wear a uniform such as nurses, doctors and the police. So in this answer, I have provided three different categories, okay, which I think feel people should be wearing different types of clothes. One, it is informal professions such as banking and the law. The dress code should be formal. And then in the second point, I pointed out that if the work that one does is less formal, then they can wear casual clothes such as a pair of jeans and a t-shirt. And finally, I pointed out that in some jobs, People are required to wear a uniform, such as nurses, doctors, and the police. Now let's move on to F. Should the company let their employees wear casual clothes to workplaces and why? Should the company let their employees wear casual clothes to work and why? Now, you can answer this question by saying, that depends on the company policy in regards to their dress code. In my opinion, I think that employees should only wear casual clothes if that matches with the nature of their profession and the image of the company. A pair of jeans and a t-shirt would not be suitable for a judge in court, but you also don't want to see a market vendor or your hairdresser in a suit. That depends on the company policy in regards to their dress code. In my opinion, I think that employees should only wear casual clothes if that matches with the nature of their profession and the image of the company. A pair of jeans and a t-shirt would not be suitable for a judge in court, but you also don't want to see your, a market vendor or your hairdresser in a suit. That depends on the company policy in regards to their dress code. In my opinion, I think that employees should only wear casual clothes if that matches with their nature of their profession and the image of the company. A pair of jeans and a t-shirt would not be suitable for a judge in court, but you also don't want to see a market vendor or your hairdresser in a suit. 
Now, in that answer, I have explained my opinion as to whether I think the company should let their employees wear casual clothes to work and why. One, I pointed out that in my opinion, I think that should depend on the company policy in regards to their dress code. And secondly, I think that employees should only wear casual clothes if that matches with the nature of their profession and the image of the company. And I gave an example. I said that uh, a pair of jeans and a t-shirt would not be suitable for a judge in court. But you also do not want to see a market vendor, okay, or your hairdresser wearing a suit. So it really de it depends on the dress code of the company policy and it also depends on the type of work that one does their profession and the image of the company okay now this brings me to the last section of our lesson in which i'm going to give you a few tips to ensure that you pass your ilet speaking test with a very high band tip number one Ensure that you use a variety of sentence structures in your answers. Use simple, compound, and complex sentences. Tip number two, ensure that for each question you provide two to three points. Join your points together using linking words or connectors. Tip number three, ensure that you use the correct vocabulary for the topic that you're discussing. Okay, that is extremely important. And the next tip, ensure that you use the correct intonation when you're speaking. Raise and lower your voice depending on what it is that you're saying and sometimes to put extra emphasis on some of the points that you're expressing to the examiner. And finally, and the most important point that will ensure that you score a very high band is you must be very careful with the tense. Be very careful with your grammar, okay? If you're not very confident about tenses, then please feel free to have a look at my playlist on tenses. I have uploaded a number of videos on all the tenses in English, about 13 videos, okay? So the most important thing that really, really determines whether you get a high band or not is whether you're speaking broken English or not. So if you're using the wrong tenses, okay, most of the times you're supposed to deliver your IELTS speaking test either in the present tense or in the past tense. Like for example, when you look at all the part two questions, what you wore, when you wore them, what they look like, all that is the past tense, okay? So be very, very, very careful with the tense that you use when you are speaking during your ILET speaking test. And the other tip is ensure that you have what we call subject verb agreement. Okay? That, if you're, if you're good in that, then there is a very high chance that you will score a very high band because it means you're not going to be speaking broken English. Okay? And once more, if you're not confident about subject verb agreement, feel free to have a look at my playlist on grammar, I have uploaded a video that is titled Subject Verb Agreement in English. Now, if you're planning to sit for your IELTS speaking test in the next couple of days, I wish you all the best. Remember to practice, 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 and take all those tips that I have, I have given and apply them as you're practicing. And with time, you will get really really good at it now if you found this video useful then give me a thumbs up i will really appreciate that that will make me happy and subscribe to the channel if you haven't i know there are a lot of people who watch my videos but you have not subscribed it's the least you could do just subscribe to the channel and Share this video in all your social media platforms, for example, on Facebook. Remember, sharing is caring, okay? Now, thank you very much for subscribing and giving me 
a thumbs up and sharing this video on all your social media platforms. Now, bye-bye for now and see you in our next lesson.